כלל, אז אני אחזר אתכם, כי בכל זאת, דבר אחד אני בטוח, שאינני בקיא ומומחה על משנתו של רבי אליהו בן המוזג, אז אני אדבר על משהו קצת צדדי, ואני מקווה שאולי נסיק כמה מסקנות לגביו. אני גם חייב להתנצל על כך שאני לא אדבר בלשון קודש, אלא באנגלית, כפי שאתם יכולים לראות, א', זה אנגלית, זה לא איטלקית, זה יותר גרוע מזה, הייתי אומר שזה אבא, איטלקי, אנגלית באיטלקית, או איטלקית באנגלית. <laughs> תשמעו, זאת אומרת, זה לא שפת האם שלי, לכן אני מתנצל, אבל לכבוד, ה, לכבוד האורחים שהגיעו לחו"ל, אז החלטתי להכין את הדברים האלה באנגלית. <laughs> Although I cannot pretend, as I already said in Hebrew, to be any kind of an expert in Ben Amozeg's philosophical world, I would like to share with you a small philological discovery that I hope will add some piece of information regarding the attitude of Ben Amozeg towards the reform and shed some light upon the reception of his thought in Italy after his death. In June 1876, Ben Amozek published a letter addressed to him by Giuseppe Mazzini in a printed leaflet titled Manifesto, and now preserved among the Sabato Morais papers at the Katz Center for Advanced Judaic Studies in Philadelphia. The purpose of this public appeal was to raise funds for the publication of his Corso di Teologia, in it, he announced for the first time his project to publish another book, at this stage under the Italian title of Israele ed Humanita, which will become Israel et l'Humanité, in which he claimed with considerable self-confidence, nothing less than the future religious fate of mankind is enclosed, le futuri sorte religiose del genere umano. Mazzini's letter and I think you can see the letter here. Well, it's not a very quality, high quality uh, image, but this is the leaflet, the original leaflet, manifesto. Mazzini's letter to Ben Amozeg is certainly not a text that has eluded scholarly attention. Indeed, it is one of the most frequently cited letters, and I have listed at least seven new editions of it, often in conjunction with different Ben Amozeg celebrations and anniversaries, like this one today. This is far from surprising, given the towering st stature of Mazzini in modern Italian political history, and the reception of his intellectual legacy in the 20th century within different and even contrasting ideologies such as socialism, fascism, and last but not least, Zionism, from Moses Hess to Theodor Herzl, Nahum Sokolov, Chaim Arlozorov, and many others. Aside from the tangible evidence of Benamozeg's relationship with this father of the Italian independence, the, letters provides an, an, the letter provides an insight into the first phases of the long gestation of Benamozeg's masterpiece, posthumously printed by his pupil, Aimé Palier. <coughs> Although this is probably the only letter addressed directly to Benamozeg by Mazzini, written from the Swiss exile by the ailing and old, already old Genoese patriot, two years prior to his death, it attests to Ben Amozeg's keen and profound attachment to the libertarian and republican ideals of the Italian radical left. Let us not forget that Mazzini had been sentenced to death by the newborn kingdom of Italy and had returned to his fatherland hiding in Pisa under the false identity of a British citizen named George Brown. He, ha he, ha he hid in a Jewish home, that of the Rosselli Nathan family, where he finally died. Ben Amozeg had, be had been also a victim of political persecution in Tuscany after the 48th revolution. Ben Amozeg made the acquaintance of Mazzini during the this latter stay in Livorno in October 1969 uh, as a guest of Enriquetta Nathan and Sabatino Rosselli, immediately after his release from the Gaeta prison. It was on this occasion, an event, thank you, Benamozek proudly recorded in his concise 
autobiography 30 years later, that he gave Mazzini the part of the Teodicea devoted to the question of the immortality of the soul. One fact, however, has escaped the attention of those who have referred to, the, to this letter, and it concerns the difference between Mazzini's autograph and the text of the letter published by Menamoseg in the Manifesto, with two significant significant erasures indicated by dots, as you can see in this image. The circle, you see these dots, are the censors, the censorship applied by Benamozek to the letter. The original text of the letter in Mazzini's own handwriting is currently preserved in the archive of the Jewish Museum of Rome, after having been in display for over half a century in the chief rabbi's office of Rome. The letter, this is the autograph. The letter was donated to the Roman Jewish community by Pellegrino Ascarelli in 1930, and it was the chief rabbi of Rome, Angelo Sacerdoti, who hung it up in his office as a proof of the intimate bond of the Jews with the Italian wars of independence. And the letter stayed there until its withdrawal by the present rabbi of Rome, Riccardo, Riccardo Di Segni, in the last uh, 10 years. The comparison with the full text of the letter, whose facsimile and transcription was published in the Rassegna Mensile di Israele in, in 1930, reveals that the Livorno rabbi had expurgated from the original text two parts that concerned some doctrinal disagreements with Benamoseg about the issue of the immortality of the soul and of Jewish proselytism. Mazzini expressed his doubts on the evidence provided by Benamozeg in his essay on theodicy to demonstrate that the immortality of the soul was already present in the mosaic legislation. He didn't believe that. Mazzini. Furthermore, he believed that the absence of proselytism in Judaism was a symptom of its scarce vitality among the monotheistic religions, running, therefore, against a pillar of Benamozeg theology concerning the mission of Judaism among the nations. But I would like to draw your attention to what Benamozeg censors at the end of Mazzini's letter. It is an entire paragraph in which Mazzini invited Jews and Judaism, and now I quote in English, to break the fence, to emancipate itself from the shackles of the symbolic rituals, to raise over the materialism of the form doomed to die towards the idea called to immortal life." End of quote. In other words, Mazzini advocated for the historical need of reforming Judaism and abolishing the halacha. The expression of breaking the fence was very strong and made direct reference to the Jewish concept of siag la Torah. Menamosei commission of this paragraph is therefore understandable, considering his orthodoxy. Menamosei was certainly not interested in exposing himself to the attacks of those who, a few years earlier, had already questioned his indefectible fide fidelity to the tenets of Judaism, Aleppo and Damascus. Around the same time, when he published Mazzini's letter, Ben Amoseg undertook to write a vehement defense of his orthodoxy on the pages of Yechiel Bril journal Alevanon, with articles in Hebrew collected later in his Tzori Gilad in 72. And reprinted in his introduction to Eliyahu Hazan, Zichron Yerushalayim, two years later. Apart from the incident with the rabbis of Jerusalem, Damascus, and Aleppo following the publication of M. Lamikra in the 60s, Ben Amozeg had been at the forefront in fighting the penetration and diffusion of reformist ideas within Italian Jewish communities. In 65, he successfully opposed Rabbi Salomone Olper for his, attempts, for his attempted reform in Turin, and managed to gather around him a large coalition of Italian rabbis against reform. Ben Amoseg also expressed his opposition to the rabbinical congress promoted by Rabbi Marco Mortara in Ferrara in 63, in order to implement some reforms within Italian Judaism. In Tam Lashad, he mocked those he scornfully called 
the reformist of Padua, a reference, a direct or almost evident reference to Shadal and his circle at the Rabbinical Seminary of Padua. But Amosek's main fear concerning reform was, as he wrote in a letter to Shadal in 59, was its divisive potential in the Jewish world. I'm just mentioning some facts that have already been thoroughly uh, examined by Alessandro Guetta and more recently also by Clemence Bouluk. However, alongside with his censorship of Mazzini, Benamosek also highlighted some parts of the letter, demonstrating that the use of the name of the great patriot was not just an advertising strategy aimed at raising funds for his book. Indeed, in 18. 77, in the preface of the printed edition of the Theologia Dommatica e Apologetica, he decided to include a single long paragraph of Mazzini's letter, revealing by that a true convergence between Mazzini's thought and his own. Indeed, Benamozek could not be fully endorsed Mazzini when he postulated that, I quote, all questions are resolved in a religious question. Even closer to Benamozek's inner convictions was Mazzini's thesis, according to which, and I quote again, revelation is continuous from epoch to epoch. The eternal book of God is not closed. And finally, Benamozek certainly agreed with the idea expressed by Mazzini, and I quote again, I foresee a great religious transformation and I can recognize its signals in everything and everywhere with a conviction that the spiritual regeneration of Europe, mosaism will necessarily have its place and its mission." End of quote. In spite of Benamozek's reticence to admit any change in the rites and in the laws of Judaism, Benamozek certainly believed, like Mazzini, in the importance of restoring Judaism to its original vocation as a universal religion. In an author of deeply orthodox credentials and commitment, Benamozek's insistence on these words of Mazzini point to a fundamental ambivalence of the concept of reform, of religious regeneration, of progressive revelation in Benamozek's own thought, concepts which he derives from the intellectual solicitation of Mazzini, Gioberti, Vico, and are related also to his links previously mentioned this morning with Freemason lodges. Recognizing in Medamosek thought a clear rationalist slant, man is progressive, he used to say, open to science, <coughs> favorable to the German Wissenschaft and to Darwin's evolutionary theories, somehow, an innovator in historicist philosophy and original in his philological exegesis, who does not hesitate to quote the extreme and radical reformist uh, rabbi Samuel Holdai, positively, and the fathers of the church, all this together, obviously does not mean to question his unqualified devotion to Orthodox Rabbinic Judaism. However, the term reform, quite rare in Ben Amozeg's writings, has positive connection, connotations in his language, especially when referred to Christianity. A religion he hoped that through reform could be brought to acknowledging its Jewish roots. This is what Palier tried to achieve both for Christians and for Jews. In Israel et l'Humanité, Ben Amozek writes, and I quote, it is Christianity, reform to be sure on its first model, that is to say Hebraism, which will always be the religion of the Gentiles. And this, the reform of Christianity will come about through Judaism itself. Thus, he praised, for instance, Pope Pius IX for being a reformer, un reformatore, and compared to Moses, Italy's first prime minister, Cavour, for being, and I quote, a model and precursor, precursor of all liberal reforms. Referring to Judaism, of course, Ben Amozek prefers terms such as palingenesis, taken from uh, Gioberti, regeneration or progress to that of reform, whose positive value remains limited to the political and spiritual sphere, being excluded from the area of religious observance and Jewish practice. 
However, and I come to my conclusion, the ambiguity in Ben Amozeg's language regarding the evolutionary character of Judaism and its adaptation to the ever-changing historical context undoubtedly opened a door to different interpretations of his legacy. Notwithstanding the reception of Ben Amozeg among fundamentalist circles, Jewish and Christian as well, reclaiming his intellectual legacy, I would like to conclude with some remarks about the ways in which Mazzini's letter to Ben Amozeg was used for different ideological purposes. Immediately after Ben Amozeg's death, among his closest friends in the, in the immediate circle of his disciples, there were those who proposed to present Mazzini as a sort of Ben Amozegian alter ego. Some of these Jewish uh, pupils referred to Mazzini as the angel, l'angelo, the holy master, il santo maestro, and even, I found one recurrence of this, the great rabbi, il grande rabbino, huh? as the old Emanuele Rosselli used to say. The letter of Mazzini allowed the followers of Ben Amoseg, such as Samuele Colombo and Dante Lattes, to blend Ben Amoseg philosophy with Mazzini's teachings, making Mazzini a sort of Gentile prophet. In short, Mazzini had been none other than the Ben Amoseg of the Christians. On the other side, however, in the years of the Concordat with the Catholic Church in the 30s, when the fascism uh, tried to bend Mazzini to its own goals of religious reconciliations within the frame of nationalism, the letter by Mazzini became a tool for making use of the great patriot's name as a guarantee of Ben Amoseg's Italian identity, and consequently of the Jews who embraced his patriotic ideals. We have an example of this in the enthusiastically positive review of the publication of the letter by Pellegrino Ascarelli, the one who donated the letter to the Jewish community in Rome, and it was published not, not in, in another place rather than in the fascist newspaper Il Tevere, directed by the infamous Telesio Interlandi, that will become one of the most virulent organs of anti-Semitism and of fascism, fascist racism. Il Tevere, in this article that you have in front of you, argued that Mazzini had shown to the Jews the way of, of the great, to the great religious reform that fascism was carrying out, also in its relationship with the Italian Jewish community. Against this ultra-nationalistic interpretation, Alessandro Levi, a key figure of underground opposition to the fascist regime already in the 30s, devoted a long article to Mazzini and the Jews in the Rassegna Mensile of Israel. Israel. Levi, followed by the socialist leader Hugo de la, Seta, de la Seta, drew from the ideal harmony between Mazzini and Ben Amoseg the faith in the possibility of freeing Italy from the fascist yoke and of recovering the republican and universalist values proclaimed by both Mazzini and Ben Amoseg. We have a very moving example of this Jewish devotion for, for Mazzini in the tombstone, in the Matseva, of Filippo Natal, son of Sarida, in which house Mazzini died, and brother of Ernesto Natal, who will become the first Jewish mayor of Rome. This can be found in the Jewish cemetery of Leghorn, on which one can read the, follow, the following inscription, and I quote, I believe in God, in the religion of my beloved mother, who was a follower of Giuseppe Mazzini. I hope that with this Rezeption Geschichte of the letter, uh, we can now get an insight into the contradictions and tensions behind the so-called Judeo-Italian symbiosis, from the selective reading of Ben Amoseg to the Judaization of Mazzini, and even its uses by fascist and anti-fascist Jews before World War II. Thank you for your attention.